So I'm coming off, uh, right off, just got in today from the Grand Lodge of Virginia uh, for the Masonic Yearly Conference here in Virginia. It was outrageously just just so much fun, a lot of good information, a lot of good people that I met up there. I just want to say thank you all for making that very comfortable for me. We had a great time. Also, I read a lot of comic books this week, and it's kind of weird. What's DC doing with these kind of weird covers that they've been running lately? Also, Marvel's bringing back some classic stuff. Let's talk about that. And also with these independent comic books, what's really going on with these? Are these things more like scripts or are they actual legitimate comic books? Let's talk about it. Let's roll that intro so we can get this started. So yeah, like I said at the beginning, it was a uh, great week. I'm just coming back from a conference that I spent all weekend on. I just want to say to all the Masons that I met this weekend, hey, it was great meeting you all. Love talking to you about online content and how to get things done. It, it, it was kind of cool. Um, if you don't know where your local Masonic Lodge is, definitely you know check them out. They're always doing charitable stuff and charity is boundless, right? We should always be willing to give charity. But they often support a lot of things like the Shriners and the kids going to hospitals. That's something that Masons uh, donate heavily to. So that was really cool to meet all those guys, but that's not why you're here. I have a crazy load of comics this week, so we're going to try to burn through these as quickly as we can. If you want a deeper dive into these things and maybe get some other perspective on it, uh, definitely check out Blaster Stash at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube. Uh, uh, myself and a panel of other comic book enthusiasts, we're all going to sit around and we're going to kind of, one, review these books and if we like them or not, or do we kind of come up with the same idea, you can participate in that because we have a live chat that's going on nonstop. You can kind of let us know and we'll always have to address those questions, concerns, or even read your comments out loud. So definitely check that out. Blaster Stash at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube. We have a good time, so, you know, check it out. It's fun. Um, so without further ado, let's jump into this. I have my notes. I have pages and pages and pages of notes. So um, our first story is kind of weird. So what happens when kind of like the figurehead of a family passes away and you're the kind of outsider in your own family and then all of a sudden that hits you and you expect things from other people like to come together all of a sudden and want to fix everybody's problem and then you're just making things worse because you're the annoying one. Yeah, that's basically what happens here in Harley Quinn. This wasn't a particularly good story. There was some great postmodernism kind of play on Crisis, the first big uh, arc in DC, and they're trying to stop it because, ah, arcs are crazy. Well, arcs are storytelling. I didn't find this particularly interesting. It was hard to read through it because they really kind of overplayed the Jersey accent throughout it. Oh, for some reason, only with Harley. Like Everybody else talks normal in her family. I, I don't know what that's about. It was weird. Uh, so what was the reason for picking it up? Hey, I'm a gimmick buyer. Yeah, I'll buy these kind of gimmick. Yeah, these things. These I think they're acetone, acetate. Ac I don't know, the weird covers, the plastic covers. So, you know, I'll pick up a gimmick cover if it looks kind of interesting. Just, I wish the story kind of gave it the same interest, and it just didn't. Uh, speaking along the same lines, uh, this said Jericho on it, and I was like, oh, I haven't heard anything about Jericho in a while. It's really a death book or a death stroke story. I know I should have looked at the number and figured that out, but I, I didn't do that. Um, so if you're not reading this current run of Deathstroke, this is going to seem very confusing. Right? They, they spent all this money on putting this new cover on here, and turns out it's just something in the story. Um, Jericho in this damn near gets godlike powers, and now he has circumceded his father. Um, so you know, father and son, where's the new, where's the old? That kind of thing's played up in here. But other than that, again, I was lost in this story. I didn't really get a whole lot of it. Uh, let's see here. Good thing about this particular book right here, King's almost done with it. In this, we get banter going back and forth while uh, Batwoman and Catwoman, or Batman and Catwoman, are fighting Bane. And it sounds like me and my wife when we're being sarcastic to each other. Like, it just... <laughs> right? The, the action that was going on didn't quite mesh up with what's being said in it to some degree. Batman has no problems with lying to bad guys, apparently. 
and of course um, Batman's alternate dimension father Thomas Wayne from the other place um, apparently shoots everybody at the end <laughs> well not everybody but close enough um, so yeah uh, we and also we keep playing off this breaking the back storyline apparently King really likes that story because we're constantly being reminded in it even the 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 cover that they did there was just kind of, I was like, really? That's the big shocker behind it? Uh, so yeah, I'm going to have to pass on that one. It, it's just, it just reads weird. This great action's going at it, and we got like, oh, remember when I said blah, blah, blah? Uh, I remember when you said blah, 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 you mean blah, 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 blah. That's all you heard back and forth, and I was just like, not digging this. Let's just stop this, please. This, Give me a cool story with some cool words in it. <laughs> That's all I want. Um, let's see here. Moving on. Oh, Legion of Doom. Yeah, I picked this up. Um, this Justice League one. This is kind of cool. So Petra is getting her strength back, and she goes ahead, and she destroys a planet right up off the bat. Um, that was really cool. Like, that That was just legitimately cool. I'm trying to find you a picture of it here. Um, and, of course, they keep overplaying this kind of the symbol of doom because now the scales of the universe are kind of tilt. The universe she ended up destroying was the Batman, that gothic one, um, ga uh, gas lamp. You know the one the gas lamp they did the cartoon after it was that one destroyed that entire thing. And she kind of talked about how this one just doesn't progress uh, in society because they kind of do like the whole steampunk thing in it. So she destroys that entire planet. That was. Ooh. So then we get this big thing of can we fight her? Can we not fight her? What happened? Why are people's emotions getting out of whack? Why can't anybody just finish the mission? And we get this really just sad thing that's going to happen at the end. Shane, which is the alternate future, right? The alternate future of uh, Martian Manhunter and Hawk Girl's child. Well, apparently an explosion's coming their way, and all you hear, or all you read in this, is just his panic coming over the phone to Batman. And, I mean, it, it kind of, kind of sad. Like, it was legitimately sad. So, definitely, I, I, I'm i liking the story. I know a lot of people don't. DC's had a run rough of it, but I've been enjoying this particular one. A lot of, a lot of stuff on in there going on. Next, I picked up this Green Lantern, the Black Stars, right? Or Hal Jordan guy. He's he's a Black Star now, which is just another law enforcement agency of the universe, more faith based than law based in this one. Um, and basically, they're going around and they're taking really jacked up places and they're making them like paradises, right? That, that's the whole point. We will make you paradises. These monsters will be made better. The whole nine yards. And then the next one, the next place they're going to is, dun, 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 that's Earth, by the way, in case you can't quite see it. So Al Jordan's is like, ah, yeah, how are we going to take care of this one? That's a rough one there. So I I liked the first issue of this. I kind of fell off of Green Lantern about five issues into it on the new run. This one seems a little cooler. I'll hang out with it for a little while longer, and we can see where this goes. Uh, next, uh, yeah, Legion of Superheroes. This is a weird one. Um, I liked it, though. I, I, I shouldn't have liked it. It's one of those weird stories where it's like a lot's going on for no reason and just to have something go on to introduce characters because there's so many. Like, they got a whole city to themselves of the superheroes. So that was kind of interesting. Um... Superboy's flying around trying to figure everything out, and he's just absolutely amazed. He doesn't see the future in this beautiful utopia that the way everybody else is kind of treating it. There's no oceans, there's no nothing. Um, Aquaman's Titan comes back in it. They think it's going to bring back oceans, and we get our first glimpse at a villain. Uh, where does that take us? I don't know, but obviously rules are being breaking and she's not having it. So that was my DC haul for this week. Moving on to Marvel. Oh, what did we get from Marvel? First, right up off the bat, we got Dr. Doom. Now, I really... Um, this It took a shortcut that I don't like. Uh, if you remember in issue one, Dr. Doom surrendered to the superheroes. The superheroes grabbed him. They got him on a plane. And then he has to escape and hide. I, why? Well, why not just escape while you're in your own area? It would have been easier, but whatever the case may be. Other than that little hitch, this is actually an okay story at best. I, 
do by himself doing things is always kind of, uh, I don't know. So who's pulling the strings? Who actually did it? People are getting snipered in this, and basically we're dealing with, um, oh, what are we doing? International affairs. Let's think of it that way. International politics or affairs to some degree in here because we got a lot going on. Um, so just kind of keep that while you're going with it. But the main story is just doom and how is he going to prove his innocence because he literally didn't blow up the space station. That, that, that's important. Um, next, something I'm really enjoying. So apparently Doc Banner is gone extremist in this or extreme activist in this and he's kind of doing the whole Magneto thing where he's separating himself from humanity as a whole in this. I don't know. Some of it seems kind of preachy and kind of weird. I'm not getting hung up on those parts of it. I did like the fact that the Minotaur is coming back. He, he's you know, he's in charge of Roxy or Rox. Um, yeah, some people have said, oh, it's a little too political. I don't know if it is political. It seems like it's making a pretty, pretty fair balance between uh, both of them in obscurity as best they can. I think that's more people's own perceptions of it. But I, I do enjoy it because we do need a new arc. And we need a reason for that arc. And we need a villain in that arc. And we need crazy ideas to happen. So, you know, the, the right thing or the good thing can be seen through it. I think that's what they're trying to do in this. So that's very interesting. I'm going to read some more of that, definitely. Fantastic Four. If you don't know, they've traveled to the planet that they originally were trying to go to. And come to find out, because they got close to it or whatever, uh, the aliens on this planet have been watching the Fantastic Four and they've been purposely subjugating people to the same radiation waves to give them superpowers. The problem is, is if they don't fit into society at that point, they get thrown beneath the city. So they're like hideous monsters down there. Things have been fighting them and now he's kind of leading a revolt. Uh, apparently people don't get to pick their partners here. It's pretty much chosen for them by something called the eye in the sky, whatever that case is. So in this, they're starting to find out that it is, again, a utopia, but it's really a fascist society. So we're getting into the action on this one and what makes um, the Fantastic Four, how they're going to be perceived as the villains, which is always a good, I like that, whenever you're fighting the system. So we'll, we'll see where that goes. Amazing Spider-Man. We got some more Spider-Man 2099. He doesn't know why or what he's supposed to do on our Earth because, you know, he hit his head a little too hard. So he's got to roll through all that. Uh, some other things that happen in this one. It's just kind of weird storytelling. There's so much going on in here. Um, Silver Sable is not really Silver Sable. Uh, it was actually an LMD of her because she's about to die and she needs a special chemical medicine stuff to heal her and there's no guarantee that it will. The foreign agent, he's kind of doing his thing, but we do get Hitman. Hitman came back and he's ready to do some damage in the comedians at the UN, or not the UN, but he's at a political rally and he's trying to stir some stuff up. So that's pretty interesting. I've, uh, I've been a fan of Spider-Man, so I'll keep reading that. Um, really liked this. Oh, weapon uh, Weapon Plus. I like how they've tied in from uh, Venom First Host, the Super Serum, and all these various projects, uh, really in a clandestine organization, kind of keeping tight neck and everything, right? So all your conspiracy theory people out there can have fun with this, right? That's, that's something they can play in. Um, in this, we get somebody who's going to go get Weapon H to take care of Carnage, and of course the plan backfires, and come to find out Weapon H doesn't really care. Uh, about Carnage that much, but we do get a lot of creepy scenes like this with him, with this particular doctor who's kind of supporting all of Kennedy, or Carnage's kind of role in all of this. So that was pretty cool. Um, I, I've always liked it when they told stories like this where they connect the most random stuff and kind of throw it into a storyline. So that's pretty fun. Uh, Yondu, Red Yondu. <sighs> I didn't like it. <laughs> like, I should have, but I, I didn't much care for it. So we got Yandu as we know him from the Gardens of the Galaxy, the pirate scallion that loves to steal, rob, whatever the case may be. And then we get, like, some guy from his planet, from the future, and for some reason he's a hero, but you know what they say, never meet your mentors or never meet your heroes because they'll let you down. And he's kind of seeing that now being naive to some degree. So we kind of have like the very old school 
Gardens of the Galaxy, Bo carrying Yondu, and then we got like the movie version, and they're just it's good. It's it's naive cop, right? And and bad bad cop. <laughs> like that's what you get in this, and it, it's okay, but I don't know. I just couldn't really get into the story much. Uh, Savage Avengers. Oh, so I, I'm waiting for this to just go weird on me, and thank goodness it hasn't happened yet. So I'll skip through all the dramatics in this one and just say that Doctor Doom kidnapped Conan, brought him to his country, and instead of and Conan, of course, doesn't like this. He's about to get to he's about to jack some stuff up, and Doctor Doom, instead of meeting him, you know, what the bump heads, he's like, look, I got good food, and I got some good wine, man. Let's just chill out and and talk about this, right? And he does, right? Because <laughs> he's been complaining nonstop about the food he's been eating and the swell he's been drinking. And he actually is probably going to get some good stuff here. I'm kind of curious how Dr. Doom's going to play in this. I think that's going to be interesting, this whole Savage thing, especially with the magic and the wizardry of Gath or Goth. And then when... It, Conan finds out that, you know, Dr. Doom is kind of a sorcerer himself. He's not big on the magics. So let's see what that turns into. I'm, I'm wanting more of this story, so that's good. Uh, let's see here. New Mutants. This was a, uh, this is a sleeper. I just could not get behind this. Uh, it's a lot of words. It's ho-hum at best. Um, they brought back the Space Jammers in this one. And they're pirates. They've always been pirates. But in this one, they're kind of pirates. And, you know, naiveness and not listening to people causes the teenage kids to get into trouble. So now they got a whole planet after them. This is it's kind of a sleeper story. I don't know if I'm going to pick up number two. I think I'm going to let my budget decide on that one, to be honest. Because I was like, I see where this is going. Ghost Rider. So Danny and Johnny Blaze are... Kind of fighting a lot in this one, but and Ghost Rider himself, the Johnny Blaze, is trying to bring a bunch of demons back to hell that escape, and they don't deserve uh, peace, right? Because they haven't done their sentence yet, and he's trying to throw them back. And apparently, a lot of bodies are being dropped. Danny K, or yeah, Danny's not hearing a whole lot of this, so he goes and tries to fight him. That turns into a nightmare because. Uh, yeah, Johnny Blaze is exceptionally stronger than him in this one, being the king of hell. So, yeah, and we got some Mephisto action going in the back. I went with this variant cover right here. It's pretty cool. I liked it. So, definitely, um, I'm enjoying the story, but I, I don't see it being a, a long last or maybe a couple more issues before I'm just like, okay, this ain't moving anywhere. Uh, last for the Marvels, we went with X-Force. X going to give it to you. Um... Yeah, this is a weird one. We're focusing a lot on this kind of like intelligent island, right? It's it's kind of a it's a mutant in its own right. Let's just say that. Um, yeah, the the island nation finds out that not every that they really uh, that's not really cool to do what they're doing in X Force, um, and that's what we seem to be dealing a lot with in this. Now the truth is that I like it at the end of the day. I thought it was okay. Um, they get attacked uh, by some, we're going to go ahead and just say Russian operatives right now because we're not really sure where they're from, but that would be the last place. Colossus has gotten damaged really bad, trying to save some people. Um, they parachute into Kokea, this kind of three-man hit squad team, and Wolverine is there to fight it. They kind of have this really deep moment where these strange animals are being kind of born, I don't know how to say it. you can't say evolution because that's not proof of it, but kind of Beast and Wolverine kind of have this conversation about predators and how predators are always around. I thought that was pretty cool, but for the most part, I'm not really sure what the story is here, so hopefully issue two will throw it in because it all seems like it's, well, it's all a tie-in to X-Men, but it seems like a very loosely based tie-in. So, I don't know. Let's see what's in number two before I make any hard judgments on this one, because I know they had to kind of set everything up. So, there's my Marvels. Last but not least, we got our independence this week. Um, the first one was uh, Space Bandits. I I've been liking this. This is a pretty good storytelling. Um, but we get this kind of weird thing. You all remember those reviews I did on Sharky the Bounty Hunter, and I ran through all of them. Well, I've finished through all this, and this is how it ends on us. 
Uh, yeah, Sharky's now the bounty hunter that's going to go chase down our two space bandits. And, of course, this is all through Netflix. Will they connect in the television show? I don't know. But this is where I got my comment from the beginning because now looking at this, I'm starting to think, okay, these are all pitch scripts, really. <laughs> like, these comic books are just pitch scripts. Uh, they'll probably follow the same exact story in here and find some way to connect them to to see if there will be a season two. I don't know. What do you think? Comment down below. Uh, is this a weird thing? Just, just because a comic book shows up on the screen, does that mean the comic book actually goes up in value? Uh, why would that be? It didn't change the numbers. So I need more rare. I, I don't know. It's weird. So, I don't know. Comment down below. All right, so uh, Spawn, number 302, we kind of go another look at Medieval Spawn in this one. That was pretty cool. I read through most of this, but the fact is I'm probably about done with Spawn because I can kind of predict what's going to happen in it. And, I mean, uh, I kept it on for the nostalgia base, you know, being 300. That was pretty cool, but I'm pretty much done at this point. So that was probably my last issue. Not anything bad, it's just really not my kind of story. Uh, gutter magic loving this story this is so fun it's just fun 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 pick this up pick up issues one and two of this and just give them a read get them digitally get them as cheap as you can read it and just let me know what you think in the comments down below i really like gutter magic i like this kind of i can't do magic but i want magic right like our heroine has in it and his buddy just kind of follows him along because he's kind of like he's objectionably different he's the odd one in the group and then like his cousin who is a magic user has like all the spells of his grandfather up in the tower and they really took their time in painting a world here without getting too explicit it plays it off a lot of tropes just so they can kind of not have to explain every single detail in it some would call it a shortcut and i would say you're right but it's done in the right way here Definitely check the gutter magic out. I enjoyed that. Uh, we finally end Berserker. Uh, Berserker and his pal go back to Berserker's uh, world after defeating all these bad guys. Um, I thought the ending was kind of cheap, but we got some good stuff that could possibly happen, right? Because now we know how to get back to the hub, if you will, where they can travel to various worlds and then travel also in the berserker world as well his friend is with him now because he's homeless and you know in our world so why not just go be homeless there and hang out with his new buddy the thing that drove me crazy is that they overuse the word buddy a lot and i think it was one of those like language things you often do when you know a word in a certain language so and you know you can say it well so you try to use it <laughs> all the time when you're communicating with somebody buddy was that kind of word in here so it was used a lot towards the end to the point to where it was kind of annoying. And last but not least, my pick of the week right here. I love Undiscovered Country. The, oh, my Lord. This is good. I like this. What happens when America is like, you know what? I'm done with everybody. Put up, We're, we're shutting down for business. And then, like, everything just goes to hell in a hat basket. You know, it's like Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome meets Lost World meets... I don't lost the, the show, right? Like, it's just everything fantastic in this. And apparently over 30 years, a lot has happened. We'll get more of that in issue two. But we kind of get this Uncle Sam pose in here. It just made me think of the Freedom Fighters a little bit. So, yeah, there it is. I reviewed this. I loved this book. Definitely check it out if you can. Uh, don't miss out on that book because you're going to regret that. Other than that, I don't have anything else, guys. But don't forget, these books we're going to review on Blaster Stash at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube. I'm sure we'll have a beautiful time doing it. Please come join us and let us know what you think about some of this stuff as well. Uh, that's why we do the show. It's for you. Also, to all the great Masons of Virginia that attended this year's Grand Lodge of Virginia Conference. Uh, it was great meeting you all. I had a great time. I hope you're watching the show. You too can comment down below. That's perfectly fine. Uh, guys, I don't have anything else. It's getting late, and I'll be honest, I am tired. So, uh... Nobody's complimented you today. Uh, yeah, you're doing okay, and you're pretty cool for swinging by, so I appreciate it. i also be on the lookout. Apparently, we'll be doing another Ralphie the Drunk. Uh, comment was made for a blind acrobatic, <laughs> and has to go through there. So Ralphie's reading through the source material now and trying to find something interesting that we can possibly talk about on Ralphie the Drunk, the psychology of 
Daredevil. So again, thank you, uh, Huey, from Blaster Stash It for your comment. We'll definitely get that out as quickly as possible. All right, guys, I got nothing else. You're pretty cool. Talk to you later. Bye.